Good afternoon, World Wide Web. Welcome back to my stock channel. This is James with another update video for you. This one's on Camping World Holdings, CWH, starring Marcus Lemonis, your favorite star of The Prophet, the television show. Yeah, this is his company. Uh, this is what he does in a year with his company. He makes 22.5% uh, for the year with his company. He's selling recreational vehicles and camping supplies. Uh, RVs are like seven or eight percent to finance right now. They're probably the hardest thing to sell. They're super expensive and the interest rate is ridiculous and you don't have to have one. So the fact that he was able to pull this off in this environment, I find personally shocking. Um, we've got, he's a really good businessman. He's running this show. Uh, they IPO'd. He already had this a strong company where he IPO'd it. It was 20 bucks. It went up to 45 bucks. It came back all the way down to six bucks uh, right when COVID got started. And then everybody decided that COVID didn't matter. And it came right back to 36. Then farting around the 30s. And it just came down for 2022. All the way down to 20. Today it's back up to 28 ish. So there's a little price history for you. Here's the one year chart. You can see it probably was better. It was in the mid 30s or 32 ish uh, early on in the year, about a year ago. Uh, the one month chart, uh, it's been a really strong month. Um, five days, down 3%. One month was uh, 4% 4, 4, 4, 4 only. That big hump's only 4%. That's pretty sad. Um, looking at his numbers really quick, uh, I can see why people like him and his company, uh, revenue has just gone up, uh, even during COVID, he barely was affected. It's just amazing. Nobody else was, uh, I don't know who else could sell campers in that environment. And then in this environment to sell campers in this environment is just mind blowing. Uh, let's check out his growth for this year. Uh, we got almost $7 billion for 2022. Uh, ooh, we got a big down for this year. That's what's going on. Uh, it's probably those interest rates. Uh, $1.49 billion for the quarter he just reported. So now he's tracking $6 billion for the year instead of 7 So he's down from $7 billion to $6 billion on pace and all looks like it kicked in right here December of 2022 maybe this yeah this was the interest June of 2022 so maybe he's not as much of a genius as I give him credit for but see the fake losses just like we keep seeing they put up just a hair of a something whether it be a loss or a win they get it to balance out at the end of the year uh, a lot of growing companies doing this they're using every penny they get to grow it even bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and then when they finally release their earnings there's something stupid like eight dollars a share let's take a guess where this one belongs at we know it's hard to sell these things with the high interest and it's six billion a year uh let's just say they can clear a million of that i don't know if they can these are intentional losses so you know they're making a profit we just don't know what the profit is. They've uh, hidden it from us by spending it on other stuff to make them grow. So we're going to see a steady flow in their asset line. This guy's a business guru, so you know he does it the right way. Uh, their winnings every year go into these asset lines, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and he's also financing his asset lines, too. So looks like his uh, winnings maybe are not as great as we thought, or he's financing a lot. Damn, that's a lot of financing, Marcus. You know better than that. Uh, the line's held steady all year long. <laughs> I don't know what to think of it. Usually if there was a bunch of fake profit there, it would be going into uh, assets. If this, uh, if this 22, uh, 7 billion, let's just say, if he really made 200 or uh, 2 billion this year, let's just say, uh, we would have, uh, he would have declared a zero and he would have bought something and that something would be worth money and that something would have been reflected in an increase 
in the assets column. We would have seen a $2 billion increase going from $4.37 billion to $4.8. I think there's a little, maybe there's $400 million there. Maybe there's $400 million there. Maybe there's, this one went from uh, 3.26 to 4.0. There was a billion there. Uh, this one went down. Probably did something. Maybe to prepare for COVID. Maybe he shrunk himself a little. I don't know. So yeah, I guess their money is going to the asset line. From 3.26 to 4.37, that's $1.1 billion in a year that he was able to bank. And the next year he was able to bank 4.37 to 4.80, a half a billion dollars he banked. So this is a fake profit. Whoops, it is a fake profit. The real profit is reflected below in the balance sheet by the additions to it. Uh, however, it did come along with debt. <laughs> so maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, let's look at this again. I'm sorry. How much does debt go up with it? 3.27 to 4.14. 900. So yeah, uh, 900, 1100 to 900. So only 200 billion got banked. 200 million got banked here. And on this one, 4.14 to 4.58 of 4. Is that 40 million? 4.14. 140 million to 550 million. So now that's like three, 300 million more. And his assets went from 437 to 485. They only banked a uh, hundred million here. He banked two hundred million here into his assets, and he banked a hundred million here. So that's about what they're making right now on a hundred million. So out of this company that's making six at six point nine seven billion, they're only making a hundred million dollars, um, and they're declaring one thirty seven, of course, which is nonsense. They just bought something. Uh, they're still showing fake earnings per share, even at these low numbers. Um, still not a loss. It's probably a very small real win, though. I don't know what their, let's see what their assets look like quarterly. That was quarterly. Annually, we can see the bigger shifts. Yeah, they really grew up annually. Usually you see the money flow to the balance sheet if it's not on the income line. If they're showing these little fake losses or down stripes, you can go see if there was any real wealth created by just going and looking at the balance sheet. Sometimes we'll just go buy something and now it's an asset. Now I have to put it over there. But yeah, their quarter looks dismal for the year and it's interest rates. And they're getting their head kicked in. Um, let's say they bring in $100 million is what they're... If they can just hold this level, let's just say, and if this brings in just, uh, say, $50, $50 million a year, let's see how many outstanding shares they have. Let's find out what their earnings per share should be in reality. Um, $44 million outstanding shares. I'd say this company is bringing in a buck a share. I think they're bringing in $44 million a year. What do you think on that $7 billion? They're throwing up fake losses to expand and to ex expand the revenue, which is notable and good. But, yeah, they're definitely bringing in $44 million to say they're not or couldn't clear that in a profit if they cut their construction expansions. Of course they could. They could put 444.7. Uh, and the stock is valued at $28. Bucks. At at least a dollar earnings per share, possibly two. This one's greatly undervalued. Uh, Disney's 90 something bucks and it's like $2 a share earnings per share. Camping World, I think they own the stadium now too in Orlando. They sell recreational vehicles. Um, they might be the home of the Jacksonville Jaguars next year. Orlando's, uh, they're building a new stadium and they're supposed to play in Orlando for Next season, while they tear down their stadium, so Orlando's going to get pro football. We're going to get the Jacksonville Jaguars in Marcus Lemonis's Camping World Stadium. And if it's owned by Camping World, that might be a pretty good clip. Get some NFL money for a while. 
Wow, that might be one hell of a 2024. I wonder if that's true. Do some homework on that. Um, are they going to get the Jaguars? Does Camping World own the stadium? It's called Camping World Stadium, or did they just stick their name on the stadium? Do I have to figure that out, too? Oh, come on, you guys. If you cared about it, you'd look it up. You'd say, who owns Camping World Stadium? <laughs> It'll probably tell you. I can tell you it's not the city of Orlando. They were going to fund it uh, for a couple hundred million dollars, and the team said, no, no, we got it. And uh, they did it without the city of Orlando, thank goodness. Uh, the city of Orlando was ready to cough up $200 million. Uh, shares outstanding, $44 million. Absolutely strong buy. Buy a tiny bit. Buy it as it falls. Um, you got Marcus Lemonis in charge. He's responsible. Uh, he's going to put up these intentional break-evens to try to grow revenue. Obviously, it's not working out because of the inflation. Inflation is coming down. Everybody with a student loan is going to lose about 600 a month or 500 a month in extra spending money come September. Uh, people are going to tighten their belts. It's going to be very deflationary. All that extra money. Um, I mean, 44 million people at $500 a month. That much money is not going to be floating around anymore. It's getting spent every month on stuff. All that stuff's not going to get bought anymore. And everybody's stuff is going to go down. And the uh, it's going to be anti-inflationary. It is going to come down. Because of this, the services sector is a whole nother ballpark, uh, but the cost of goods and probably services because of the pain that's going to cause the companies is going to also come down eventually. Um, uh, they, you play trends. Uh, right now, this company is hurting because of the financing, because of the interest rates, not of their debt, uh, possibly of their debt a little bit, but they're a very profitable company. But mostly because of the cost of their vehicles uh, to, to finance. You, you, you've got to finance an $80,000 camper at 8%. Your monthly payment's like double what it used to be. He used to be able to sell it for you know, $600 a month. Now he's got to get $1,399 a month for it. So it changes your whole sales prospects as a salesman. It's a much harder to talk somebody into buying this thing. And March was uh, bigger than December. That's notable. He actually brought that back. It was a worse abyss. So he's, he's got the comeback on, which is nice to see. Hopefully that'll continue and it'll come right back to here. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but you want to get in beforehand. You wanted to get in on this collapse before he's, before the rates got all high and it became obvious they weren't going to be able to sell RVs and then they weren't able to sell RVs. Now's the point where you want to get in where they're going to be lowering rates and the lower and lower and lower the rates get, the better and better and better Camping World does. Are you with me? This one's the ones you want to go long on. And uh, I don't think he's going to make you wait a long time to see a profit. He's going to get it to go up as much as he can. If it's not going up fast, I think he's going to show it. Uh, you're going to see it eventually. Find out if they own the stadium. If they do, leave it in the comments below. I would love to know. Um, $28 a share. It went up a bunch recently, I think. Uh, no, down 3% for the day. Down 3% for the week. Um, in a month, 4%, 6 months, way up. Yeah, it might be the time to dive on this one. Unless it's going to put her out again. Maybe buy a little bit and get more uh, as you're going. You know, if it falls a little, grab a few more shares. If it falls a little, grab a few more shares. You know it's worth eighty bucks. You know it's you know there are dollar earnings per share at minimum, and you know interest rates are going to come down one day. That's inevitable. These campers are going to be normally priced one day again, and the whole uh, inflation inflation recession is, is looks like it's coming to a close. And I think just the student loans is going to bring it to a close quickly. That's the uh, that's a very deflationary what's going to happen. And it was very inflationary, it was just spiking the punch of everybody. 40 million Americans running around with all this extra cash. It was just crazy. Like one out of every five people with just a shit ton of money in their pocket to spend every month. And they haven't felt high groceries, high bills, or high anything yet. They haven't felt it one bit. They're like, oh, I don't have to make my student loan. This is awesome. And now they do. September's the first payment. So 
expect those interest rates to turn around. They look like they're already turning around the other day. Uh, hopefully that will cover and maintain itself. And if it does, camping world's all uphill from here, guys. This thing's going back to, uh, I don't know where it's going back to. It used to be 40 bucks. It's going to go back to at least there. And I think all this growth and spending and quarter after quarter after quarter of just liquefying all of your profits into reinvestments and keeping the debt line maxed out with reinvestments. Marcus is a genius. He's playing this thing like a fiddle. Grab some Camping World Holdings. Not much of it. Grab it as it goes down if you're ever so lucky. Uh, thank you very much. Please like the video and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.